1.4 part 2 composition of functions in part 1 we did all of the normal arithmetic adding stuff, subtracting multiplying and dividing you may or may not remember but um, we did it in 1.4 part 1 indeed and now 1.4 part 2 composition of functions this is like a new operation that only works with functions and what it does is it lets us plug one function into another excuse function. me just one second this is sort of important okay okay glad we took care of that so the way we represent the composition of functions operation is with an open circle a closed dot would be multiplication but an open looking dot is composition and we re we look at it like this it like says, it's, it's like you're looking at a fog yeah, it is. It is like you're looking at a fog, and especially whenever I write it, it looks very much Look, it's like, fog. Look, it's fog of X. This is not fog times X either. Like, puppies, we want the puppies to live. Yes, it's not fog times X. It's F of G of, of X. X. And that's what is written down here, is how we, write, how we would read this, is F of G of X, or you could say F composed with G, or something like that. Right. Okay, or you could do it the other way around. But... What's happening is basically anytime you see that open circle, you could put a parentheses like this, which is what is right What's here. Right. And that helps you see take G and plug it into F. Well, everywhere there's a variable on the F function, you yeah. put whatever G equals into that thing. Right. All right, let's uh, let's give it a try. Let f okay. of x equal x squared minus one and g of x equal square root of x. Right. Find the following composite functions in their domains. Oh, All which right. we already bring in restrictions. Yeah. Well, we'll let's okay. find All it right. first, first, and then let's okay. talk about the restrictions. So, we're, so I I nominate a kind of a several step issue for this okay. as we're learning. So let's go with from fog to f of g of x. So you want me to write it? Right. Like this? F, yes. Okay. And then we're going to write, take out what, what the g of x and put what it really is in there. Okay. So now we're going to have f of square root x. Right, because g of x equals square root of x. Right, it says that. Okay. And then we're going to have what that actually is. F so, is. So f is something squared minus 1. And that something is now the square root of that's x. That's it. That's it right there. That's okay. how I recommend doing these till we get comfy. Okay. Now... Uh, we'll simplify here in a second, but let's talk about the domain of each of these functions before we did anything with them. The domain of x squared minus 1, now you can get your calculator out and look at the domain, but... It's not a fraction. Or a square root. So it's all reals. Right. Okay, and then this one is a square root. Oh. So that means what values can we not plug in? Negative. Okay, so starting from 0 and And including up, 0. Yes. You can take the square root of zero. Yeah. Yep. So what happens is we are, through this process, taking g and we're plugging it into f. Now this will simplify. Square root of x squared is? x. x. This minus simplifies one. to x minus one, which is what f of g, I don't know if I have enough room to write it. f, f of, of g, g of, of x, x is. That's what this equals. Now, if but, you're not mathematically astute, you would go, oh, that domain is all real numbers. Okay, but it's not. But it's a lie. Because what numbers were we only allowed to plug in? From zero to infinity. Okay, because we're taking g and plugging it into f, we have to use g's domain. You can okay. graph this too, and it will show you the correct graph, which might help. If you graph. Uh, but you have to graph it from this. Before from, you, you gotta, simplify. Yeah, you gotta graph from that okay. step. And so this should look like, and actually it'll be misleading, right? Because it should look like a line, Right. but if you actually, well, I guess it's a line, but it starts at zero. Starts at zero, right. It doesn't right. graph the whole line. I was going to say a whole, but that's not a whole. No, it won't it be a whole. It zero. starts at zero and goes. Uh, okay, let's look at uh, Goff. 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 Okay. Bob Goff. So? Famous motivational guy. We write it as G of F of X. Right. Okay. And then G of X F squared minus one. That's what F of X is equal to. Okay. And now where X is? Take that G function. Take x out, put x squared minus 1 in. Now wait, can we simplify this? Yes, that's x minus 1. Everybody knows. We're just, we're just yanking Pup, the puppy, puppy dies yeah. if you do that. No, that's not right. This is we as all simplified like puppies. as it can get. You cannot simplify. Yeah, don't go any further. Remember, if you're going to simplify a square root, it's you have to be. have something squared. Now, x squared factors, x squared minus 1 factors to x plus 1, x 
minus one. And that's not the same. Th those aren't the same. Yeah. You either have to have um, things being multiplied together, like this would simplify. Right. Okay. You could even have... Or you could have... Go ahead. You, you could have x squared plus 2x plus 1. Because that factors Because into that factors to x plus 1 squared. But no that's not what we have in this case. Right. Okay, so be very careful not to get trapped by that yeah. whole thing. Yeah, danger. Now, what is the domain of the square root of x squared minus 1? Well, we're already limited to it has to be at least are we? 0. Are we? We're well, plugging I mean, in f values, and we're allowed to plug anything we want but in But you can't, can't have a negative number in there, so you're limited. Okay, okay. So you Because you, we have a radical situation. Yes, yeah, so we need to say x squared minus 1 has to be greater than or equal to right. 0. Right, yes, yes, that's what I'm saying. Okay. Yes. So, if this does have a domain issue, which it does, we have to figure out what the, the domain issue is, but this one does not get a domain issue. No, because f, he's he's, he's, all really he's already in really, yeah. Now, this is tricky whenever you go to try and solve it this way. We know that x squared has to be greater than or equal to 1. Oh, boy. What does that even mean? Um, and so, actually, let's think about this. Is a number bigger than 1? okay right like i can plug in two right. and i'm fine mm -hmm. but if i try to plug in a half nope i'm not fine okay you know so the, what a good way to here, set this up is maybe to factor it oh uh, maybe and do x plus one and so that what that tells us then is that one and negative one are our issue right those values. are the trouble points but what's happening for our domain is we can plug in anything from negative infinity to negative one right because all those negatives are going to get changed right. to positive. remember a negative times a negative is a positive right but then it skips until you get to positive one comma positive infinity. right right so that's our domain for that there you go and these take some getting used to but the key for the domain part is what did you plug in right okay right if there's an issue where you plugged in then that's going to be an issue that's carried through. Right. You can or graph the and you can graph in. these as well and 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 have a look. And, but you have to graph from your original composition before Where you, you simplify. Yeah. And so in this case, this one, right. like we weren't able right. to simplify it any further. Right. All right. Good talk. All right. So we've composed some functions. Mm -hmm. Let's decompose. That sounds brilliant. And so decomposing means to do the opposite. So again, this is something that can seem kind of tricky at first. But the idea is we are given the end function and we want to come up with a the pieces. function f, yeah, and a function g, so that if we were to do f of g of x, we'd get our original function mm -hmm. h of x. There you go. So I personally we can figure out different ones yeah actually there's there's like tons of right maybe not tons right there's, there's multiple answers right. most of them have an answer that's easiest to see that, right in my opinion right i agree with that okay for example if you look here where they have this x plus one in common what if that's what we decide to plug in oh okay? that's what i saw okay so g of x is what am i plugging in right f of x is what did we have to plug into uh then you just Take where sh where you've underlined there and just give and it just a variable give it a, yeah. like an x. Yeah. Ta -ta. And that, then you can always is, check yourself by replugging it. I think that's great. Okay. X plus one was here. Right. X plus one was there. Right. The other thing that you could do, which could be a really time killer deluxe, is foil that sucker out and. That would be a terrible idea to yeah. do that because we're trying to. Keep it simple. Yeah. Keep it simple. That's why I said it'd be so terrible. If, Keep it simple, silly. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So this says x cubed, I believe. Under yeah, there, I think that's an x cubed, yep. Um, and so, so I, I see, um, I'm going to go with, I see the x cubed as being put in, x cubed plus one potentially. Yeah, you could either put just x cubed or 
x cubed plus 1. I personally would go with x cubed plus 1 because I'm taking that and I'm plugging it into what? A, a square root. Right. Bang! And this How is, hard was that? This um, idea, being able to see this, is super helpful in calculus. Mm -hmm. The oh. idea that I have this and I'm plugging it into this and being yeah. able to separate these right. things. This is a crucial skill. Absolutely crucial. Implicitly defined functions. Now that's that's quite a mouthful. Uh, what does that even mean? You know, basically, here's what it means. Okay. You got two different variables that have to work together to make up. Like, you have to use y now. Okay. Because normally, we just solve for y and then right. pretty much pretend like the y's not right. there. We yeah. solve we for just, it yeah. and grab it. And then it. we just, like, we pick some x's. But, but now... That y matters. Y is critical to the successful navigation of this problem. All right. So, and it says here... Uh, the relation x squared minus y squared equals 16 is mm -hmm. not a function. Think it's about not, it. It's not. This is not a function. It's and, not. And here's the easiest part to tell that from. Uh -huh. The y is being squared. Yes. Anytime and, y squared, mm -hmm. it's not a function. If it's just y in there all by itself, it doesn't matter where it is, we can... I'm waving my pencil in Yeah, front I was of about to say, somebody's going to be like, you're poking their eye out. You just Get rid of that. Board. However, if we solve this equation for y, we can write two equations That's that correct. are That's functions. correct. That's correct. That's correct. And when we do this, we say that the two functions are defined implicitly by the given relation. Right. And now, this is, in other words, this is how you would need to graph it on your calculator. Right. So if I solve for y squared, I've got to subtract x squared over. That's my first step. I would uh, multiply both sides by a negative 1. Mm -hmm. So that gives me positive x squared minus 16. Or I could have left it the other way you around. Have, you could have if you wanted to. And I, then I would square root both sides. But if you square root in an equation, you personally, if, if you, you square root in an equation, you have to put a plus or minus sign, which is why this is not a function. Because as soon as you go to put this in the calculator, you've got to put it in two different spots, which is why we can label kind of two different... Y1, Y2. Yeah, mm -hmm. we can label two different things here. One of them is the positive square root. One of them is the negative. Think about root. the quadratic formula, which you all are familiar with. The x opposite of b. Negative b plus or minus. Pl what, what was that? What was that? Uh, plus or minus. What, what was that? Plus or minus. What was that? Plus or minus. That's where it comes from. It's Say this what? sort of situation. Plus or minus. Say what? Hey, I think I got a beat mixer okay. on here that I downloaded. Maybe well, we let's can... not worry about it right okay. now. Okay. Okay. But see, these are two functions that define that relation. And right. And you can graph both of those, and together they make your. Your one conic section. Yes. Which, uh, this is, I thought about putting a circle on here, but this is not a circle. You but know what this is? Uh, it's a hyperbola. 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 It's a, hyper, it's a hyperbola. You said that four times. I Why? did. How about if uh, we make our code word? Code word could be. What do you mean? Um... How about uh, how about hyperbola? How about cool. hyperbola? Hyperbola. Spelling counts. Wow, we. Oh man. Thanks for joining.